Hey everyone and welcome back. So we are at the very end of our project. You know, we've created a bunch of designs. We've created a bunch of components. We understand different things like color theory. We understand a bunch of things like typography and like we're at the end and you are probably wondering, what do we do with all of this? Like, how do we put it together? How do we showcase some of our designs and some of our interactions we've been thinking about? How do we incorporate things like motion animation? And this is where the fun stuff really happens. If the other stuff wasn't fun to you, I mean, this is the really, really fun stuff. So what we have here are our high fidelity prototypes. So I've kind of grouped them into the same file where we have our actual high fidelity designs. And over here, we can really start to experiment with certain types of interactions. As you can tell, I don't just have one large prototype. I actually advocate against that unless you're just trying to like showcase some like the navigation tree but if you're trying to get into the little different types of elements you may want to actually create like a separate prototype for that so what i have here is i have our onboarding section now i want to showcase what it's like to get from the main onboarding screen to sign up or not signing up in this case the user's not going to actually sign up so let's go ahead and play this. But before we actually do that, I want to click the prototype tab. And as you can tell, I have everything set up here. I have a different type of phone model. I have like the background color set to whatever I want. I have my starting frame, which is at the splash screen prompt. Looks like we're good to go. So if I select this, you can see that if a user presses this CTA, they're going to go to this page, and this is the interaction I have. Now I have on tap, it will navigate to the next onboarding screen. It will push this onboarding screen out, but it will smart animate those layers. And what that means is, if you were paying attention in our last course around prototyping and motion and animation, smart animating the matching layers will actually keep the layers that are named the same in the same frame, and it'll just animate them to a new spot, depending on different types of properties. Like it could be position, it could be color, it could be size, it could be rotation. There's so many different properties that are covered by Smart Animate. So let's take a look. So we have that pumping in here. I've also set up a couple of different interactions here where it's very similar. We have that push animation all at the same time. The type of animation is like an ease out, but I also have on the actual entire frame, I have a drag interaction. So if users just want to kind of swipe through, they would get the same interaction from clicking next, but it would actually just be like a drag animation. And then if we take a look at the top, we have a skip button and that skip button is going to lead all the way to the very end. And you know, I want to keep this at the very top. I don't want users to skip through this onboarding. I want them to get a good understanding of, you know, what is this application all about? So uh, one thing I want to just showcase before we actually run this prototype that I forgot about. So you can tell like text is named the same. So we'll see slight animation there in terms of how the text changes. These animations are definitely different. So I have this one named illustration one. I have this one, illustration two, and so on and so forth. These circles are actually all named main circle. So let's uh, bring that up. So you'll see if I click one circle, it's gonna be reflected in every frame. It's gonna show me straight up what I'm dealing with, where it's repeated and how it possibly may animate. Same with these carousel little buttons over here. So I have a carousel set up, text, and I have our buttons. Okay, so let's run this prototype. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click play. It's gonna pop up in a nice window over here. And if we press R, we will restart it. So if I click on my prototype, I can see which button I'm going to click and I'm gonna do that. So we'll see, that was a nice little animation. We had that main circle come in, everything slides in nice and slow. If I want to kind of swipe, we can start seeing a little bit of a swiping animation. We can see like how the actual uh, carousel starts to work. So I'm gonna click next. Boom, we're on our second page. Irrelevant results again. Boom. And then the last one, 
Perfect, so at this point, we're at the very end of our onboarding screen, and all I'm going to do is I'm gonna click. So we had a little issue there, we'll see. Ask me again later. You notice how there's a little funky background change? Now this is what we're gonna do here. At this point, if I click ask me again later, I don't wanna smart animate at all. So let's see if that fixes it. Yes, it does. So it just moves in over and we're at the home screen. Now we don't need to worry about things like logging in at this point. You just can log in if they click that, but we have easy ways to get back. So it, as you can tell, I've also set uh, animation to go back and forth if the user wants to do that. But this is how we've handled our onboarding. It's really exciting stuff. I love that. I love the little animations there. And then we can kind of go through our containers. We have kind of like a swipe container over here. Same with our deal section. And then we just have our standard things like our uh, shopping and habits and interests. So these are the kind of the components that we've used. Now, if we go back to our screen, you can tell that sometimes when you're creating prototypes, you know, your components may not actually work really well because if you're trying to smart animate certain things, you're gonna need to possibly break those down a little bit more. I've done that a bit through some of the prototypes I've created. Like here's some carousel dots. They're not a component yet, but I may actually create a component for them. When I'm using them in this instance, I probably won't actually use the component version. So you have to think about those little things because you know, sometimes if we take a look at our primary default component, if there are certain things changing within you know, you see how deep this goes and with it needing to match certain naming conventions and stuff like that, you may have two primary button defaults on the same screen and you may need to rename them and you know, things get a little bit complex in that regard. So that is what we've done for onboarding prototype.